14. Zhu Sengdu of Dongguan, during the Jin Dynasty, Zhu Huichao. Zhu Sengdu, a native of Dongguan, was originally named Wang Shi and had the style name Xuanzang. Although he was from an impoverished family and lost his father in his childhood, he had great talent and noble physiognomy. At the age of 16, he stood out because of his brilliant spirituality and unusual generosity. With a kind and affable nature, he was admired by the neighborhood. Zhu Sengdu lived with his mother and treated her with exemplary filial piety. His family proposed for him to the daughter of Yang Deshen, a gentleman in the same prefecture. The girl, named Tia Aohua, was pretty, elegant, and versed in classics. Upon the proposal, Yang's family agreed immediately. However, before the marriage, Tiaohua's mother died abruptly. Soon later, her father passed away as well. Zhu Sengdu's mother subsequently died. After experiencing the impermanence of life, he was inspired by the truth of emptiness and thus renounced the world, changing his name to Sengdu. As an itinerant monk, he traveled far away from worldly noises. Tiaohua served her mourning period for her parents and thought to herself that a female's duty was to follow her father or older brother. When at the home of her maidenhood, to follow her husband after marriage, and to follow her son after the death of her husband, and that there was no reason why she should be allowed to live independently. Thereupon, she wrote to Zhu Sengdu, the hair and skin of a man are not supposed to be harmed. The sacrifice to the forefathers of the family should not be interrupted. She also attempted to persuade him to consider complying with the secular code of conduct and to alter his aspirations. At such a flourishing age, you should demonstrate your shiny appearance to accumulate benevolence for your forefathers' spirit in heaven and to accomplish the wishes of human and celestial beings. She composed five poems, one reads, The great path is endless, the sky and the earth eternal. Huge rocks do not disappear, the seeds of the weed are innumerable. The life of men in this world can be likened to wine passing through a window. When the glory is not seized, in dusk all become dismal. The sigh lingers over the river, the sunset is a reminder of a beating clay vessel. Pleasant sounds can amuse the ears. Tastes can make the food enjoyable. Silk clothes are to decorate the body, and by gorgeous hats the head is enkindled. Why should you tonsure yourself, to catch emptiness and let reality go? Do not blame me for my attachment. I merely call your attention to succeeding the ancestors. Zhu Sengdu replied with a letter. Assistance to the monarch merely serves one nation, while Dharma transmission benefits myriad countries. To respect and stay with family members is inferior to the preaching of the teaching in order to deliver sentient beings in the three realms. Not to harm the hair and skin is a secular saying which originates from shallow views, I however did not accumulate enough merits and virtues to take care of both spheres, thus feel ashamed of myself. Many littles make a mickle, I should start from the smallest things. I now wear a cassock, hold a Buddhist staff, drink spring water, and chant prajna. I would not exchange them even if I were given a prince's costume, delicacies from land and sea, resonant sound, or shining color. If you and I share the same aspiration, I hope we can attain nirvana together. Yet people's inclinations vary, well like their very different faces. You are not fond of the dharma, and I have no interest in secular affairs. Miss Yang, I hereby bid farewell to you, the connection in countless lifetimes is cut off today. Year after year, my time is limited. Men in the monastic path should eliminate glamour and return to simplicity every day, while worldly people need to adapt themselves for the circumstances. You are supposed to love someone that deserves you in your time. Do not bear me in your mind any longer, that
will only lead to your own vainness. He also responded with five poems, one of which reads, Occasions and conditions never stop changing. Time flies quickly. Even huge rocks may disappear, why not countless seeds of the weed? Because the water restlessly flows, the sigh over the river is deep. Have you ever heard the singer of white hair? That hermit was wrong chi chi. Cotton clothes are warm. Who needs attire to be silky? Clinging to the joy in this life. What if the next cycle is bumpy? Benevolence is accumulated by oneself. Why would you say for the sake of my ancestry? Zhu Sengdu's firm will touch Tiaohua. Hence she also converted to Buddhism. Since then, Zhu Sengdu focused on Buddha Dharma studies, read a wide range of sutras, and wrote the Pitan Zhigui on the essential of Abhidharma, which circulated among the public. Afterwards, his whereabout became unknown. His contemporary, Zhu Huichao in Henei Prefecture, had paralleled fame in cultivation and studies as Zhu Sengdu. He forged a deep friendship with Zhou Shuji, a gentleman of Yanmen, and commentated on the Srimala Sutra.